Ladies and gentle beings, welcome to Memes Testing, where I play games wrong and see if they're still completable. Today we'll be taking a look at the game that absorbed a significant portion of my childhood, Diablo 2. There are two things I knew growing up playing this game. I hate playing with necromains in Act 2, and the start of Act 3 is like being lost in a giant green Ikea. One thing I always loved in this game was the druid. He has the power to summon tornadoes and earthquakes, has a sick ponytail, and honestly is likely one of the reasons I had one in my late teens. Ponytail, not tornadoes. But one thing that I always knew is that the starting ability Ravens was only worth as much as the content of their bones. So let's dive into Diablo 2, Burb only. And immediately we have a problem. We need to level up to gain skill points, and the druid doesn't start with the raven skill. Luckily, most of the early game enemies are useless, so we are able to run around like a headless chicken and look for every chest that's not nailed down. Once we get enough money, or are lucky enough to get the right equipment, we can start resetting the run until we find an item in the shop with the thorns property. This will have anyone that attacks us take a little bit of damage in return. This is useful because the only attack we're able to do this entire run is using the ravens. This will have anyone that attacks us take a small amount of damage and allows us to level up without attacking anyone. Now that we have a burb, let's see what we're working with. Oh, this AI is just horrible. If we get too far from the burb, it teleports to us, but we kind of need to move to live. This might be a problem, but we can go ahead and start clearing out the first quest, the Den of Evil. Nothing crazy here, just a number of standard enemies, and for completing it, we do get a free skill point, so hey, not too shabby. Next would be Blood Raven. And this is the first actual mini-boss of the game, and until recently I thought it was mandatory. Turns out Blood Raven, the Countess, and the Smith are all optional. But child me never figured that out because quests are worth a lot of experience, and that made the line go up faster. And that's all I cared about. Blood Raven goes down to the actual ravens with no issue, and we can move on to having a full set of five ravens. All future levels of this skill will only increase the damage, but even with five of them, the randomness of the burbs is not super useful. As you'll see in any multi-target fight in the future, most of these will be packing at random targets and they'll never focus on one specific thing. Now we can make it to the dark woods and tickle this tree in order to get a scroll to enter Tristram and free Deckard Cain. While we're here, we're also going to grab Wurt's leg and peck the blacksmith to death for fun. We can now beeline to the outer cloister and make our way inwards to the catacombs under the cathedral in order to fight the main boss of Act 1, Andariel. This fight is usually an easy one as long as you can avoid the various ranged attacks, and if we can lure her away from her minions, we should be able to play Ring Around the Blood Hole as seen here to make it out mostly unscathed, as the birds themselves are immortal, and they are only limited by the number of attacks they can do before they despawn. With that, we can now move on to Act 2 and make our way to Lut Gulain. The first and easiest mission of the Act is just going to be going into the sewers of the city and killing Radiment. This undead mage has some seriously annoying poison attacks, but as long as we just barely keep them on screen, we should be able to chip them down without any issue. Next up, we have to find the staff pieces and the Herodric cube. We can do this in the Claw Viper Temple, Halls of the Dead, and Maggot Lair. When we take the pieces and combine them in the tube, we will... In the tube? When we take the pieces and combine them in the cube, we will then have access to the Canyon of the Magi and able to open Talrash's tomb. At some point during this, the sun will go out, but we fix this by completing the Claw Viper Temple, for the main quest anyway, 
I never really realized this was a thing when I was rerunning this game, as I spent the entire time running around without stopping, as we barely have use for loot, and anything a basic mob drops is going to be outclassed very quickly by either the vendors in the next act, or by anything a boss or mini boss drops. So I've just been ignoring all the normal mobs unless absolutely necessary. Speaking of grinding to a halt, the maggot layer is the single worst part of Act 2, and if the start of Act 3 did not exist, there would be absolutely no contest for this being the worst part of Diablo 2. This place is both gross and claustrophobic. Most onions so far have had enough room to at least move, but this single file hell is seared into my mind. Back in the original patches of the game, pets actually had collision, and this made any necromancer a liability in this area, as two dozen skeletons with the worst pathfinding possible would clog up the tunnels, making multiplayer horrendous. So I'm glad that was eventually patched out. Once we have the pieces and have assembled them in the cube, we move on in to the palace of Loot Gulain and enter MC Escher's wet dream to find the correct symbol that marks the true tomb of Duriel. With this in hand, we can take the staff and go meet Andariel's twin. Ah, of course, I see the resemblance. I think. This was by far the hardest of all the fights we've done so far, and it wasn't due to any gimmicks. All Duriel can do is slow you down and hit like a truck. Eventually, we outlast him, mainly through chugging as much flavor aid as we possibly can, but we just barely make it. We can now get on a boat to the Kuras docks, and we have an awful area to get through. The forests at the start of Act 3 all blend together with nothing more than a name change. The desert at least had some kind of clear entrance and exits for each area, and most of them had unique enemies. But here, everything is so homogenous in area and enemy that finding anything at any time is next to pointless unless you do it in one sitting. As the game is randomized, so no matter what, you will be wandering aimlessly to find the parts that you need to make this Axe MacGuffin and get into the last area. This time, we will need a brain, heart, and eye. Only one? Sure, okay. And we mush them all into a flail in order to break the orb that's locking the first of the prime evils away, Mephisto. To get these parts, we will need to wander around in the same jungle to find two dungeons and then wander back through the jungle to Lower Karast to find the last body part in the sewers. I know I'm being kind of hard on Act 3, but everything after the first section is really good. The Lower and Upper Karast areas have a lot of variety despite being the same city, as well as the actual temple and Lower areas all have a unique feel and unique enemies. But... The start of this act is basically just a giant snaking river with trees. It's just not fun to get stuck in or to wander around aimlessly. Any amount of variety here would have been useful. Anyway, we easily round circles around all the mini bosses and take the parts we can all the way to the council at the end of Kurast. This is usually a little bit of a pain as they are all powerful mages spawning hydras and using most of the sorceress's kit but this can be remedied by picking them off one by one as they will very helpfully wander out if we get a little too close most of which get stuck on the walls and we can eventually pick them off getting the flail and then smashing the orb that they have been guarding once they're all taken care of and this is where I will put in a point of order for the pedants in the audience. Uh, one, this is not a call out, I'm also a massive pedant. And two, uh, this act of smashing the orb is not an attack. This entire game, I've had life click set to the throw option with no offensive potions equipped. 
This is why whenever I'm walking around, you'll see the chat filled with impossible or I can't do that. And simply clicking on the orb with throw equipped smashes the orb. With this being possible, it's definitely not an attack and the item itself is used up once you're done. So let's move on. With that out of the way, we'll make our way down to Mephisto and our ravens peck them to death. And anticlimactic, as this was easier than just walking down here. Uh, he does look to do some massive melee damage like Duriel, but he can't slow us, so I just kind of walked away and picked up his soul stone when he was done. Well, off to hell we go, and we move on down to the forge and smash the soul stone of Mr. Mistopheles. The smith tries to stop us, but with there being enough room for us to actually walk in circles, and there not being any real ranged attacks here, we dispatch him pretty easily. All that's left in the base game is to walk to the end and break the seals and tickle Diablo to death. I thought this was going to be pretty difficult, as we're both under-leveled and our gear is literal trash, but as long as we never stopped moving, it was fine. This did take quite a while, but eventually we did it. We purged the world of evil and saved everyone. Well, that just about does it. So, Diablo 2 with only burbs is possible, and. But. Oh, he has a brother. Turns out we're not done, but the good news is Act 5 is both a step up in quality and difficulty from the original game. But it was also made in such a way that only the last quest to kill Bale is needed. So this is going to be pretty short. Why am I like this? Why must I choose to play games like this? Okay, so we just ran to the end of the game. The main stumbling block being that everything three or four shots us. But as long as we chug potions like we've got a paper due in about four hours, we can make it to the summit. We make it to the summit and have to fight all three barb specs at the same time. Okay, sure, there's no real ranged attacks here, so let's just play ring around my attention span once more, and then we can go into fighting Bale. This is the big one. And before we can fight, we need to be a few waves of basic enemies first. I mean, this should be cake. Oh, dear and new, they have regenerating health. And they hit like a kidney stone. Okay, how do we do this? We need to scrape off as many of these as possible and hope that the encounter does not reset. Luckily, when we're sprinting, we're ever so slightly faster than these enemies, but... Stamina doesn't last forever. Even if I mess up their pathing, it takes about 30 to 60 seconds to kill each one of these with all five ravens on them. We're going to have to play this one slowly to even remotely have a chance. After washing through several waves, we can actually fight Bale directly in front of the world stone we're apparently protecting. And at this point is where we have our final confrontation. Standing behind a pillar. There are two bells, but all of their ranged attacks do not actually make it past the pillars. And while their melee attacks are devastating, we simply don't have to deal with them if we're not up close. So I don't know if the pathing broke or he considered me in melee because of the ravens. This was one of the easiest fights in the game, if we don't include the mob waves beforehand. And with a whimper, we have beaten Diablo 2 with only ravens. Honestly, this was just a nice run to blow off some steam, and outside of a few stumbling blocks around Act 3, we had a fairly easy time up until the final fight. Next time I feel like keeping this bird theme going with another looter I enjoyed growing up, but that can wait until next time. 
if you're still here, I appreciate your time. And if you think it was well spent, a like or subscribe goes a long way to let me know. If you have any suggestions for other challenges, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you when we do the next thing.